welcome back to another video. Today we're talking about the Ilford rinse. It is an often overlooked part of the film process, but rinsing a film, very important. The fixing process, which is the second to last chemical process before the rinse, involves essentially fixer, quite a nasty chemical, taking out the, uh, the unexposed parts of your film. And the thiosulfates sulfates are kind of left sitting in the emulsion, sitting in the negative, you want to make sure that none of that is left on your film because when you put it in your negative sleeve, if a little bit of that waste chemical stays on the film, it can actually cause degradation. You can go back to your negatives after say six months or even sort of less than that, two months, and find that there's the strange orange markings on them. Don't worry, if that happens, the trick is just refix it as quickly as you notice it and give it a good long rinse. But what I'm gonna share today, and you've probably got this from the title, is a method of rinsing your film that is much more water efficient and essentially gives you a completed rinse using less water in the same amount of time. If you're coming from a similar situation to me, you might be using something like this Patterson hose system. If you haven't seen this before, it is just one of the normal sort of uh, developing tanks. I mean, you guys know what these are. And this hose just fits over the end of a tap, clips into the bottle and you blast water, super simple. It kind of goes down, bubbles out the top and removes the waste products from the film over a four or five minute period. This is hugely inefficient water wise and depending on your situation, you might, well, you might just not want to waste water for kind of ecological reasons, but you might have limited access to water. You might have sort of drought laws you might um, have a water meter and you kind of don't want to just pay for an extra 20 litres when three will suffice. The Ilford method is essentially a series of agitations that cuts your water uses dramatically. There's this document here, which I have just printed out directly from the Ilford website. What I'll do is I'll put a link to this in the description. And if you don't need the kind of visual guide and walkthrough of it, just click that, follow it. It does work. You can sort of jump back into this YouTube video, go to the end, and I'll show you some Ilford rinsed films that have sort of survived the process. By the way, Ilford do say this only works with their fixers, or really it only works with certain types of fixers. There's rapid fix, there's kind of high pan fix, but do check with the manufacturer's instructions. If you use something like this, which I think a lot of people do, you'll be just fine. Okay, so here's a simple test. This is my previous rinsing method, and I've got it in this plastic container that essentially will catch all the water that would be going through this tank. So what I'm gonna do now is just turn this tank on, and I'm gonna be as sort of reasonable as I would be with it. So I'd aim for about 20 degrees, give him a blast. So obviously it takes a second to fill up. So this is now running, and you can see the tank start to fill up. I'd normally do that for about three minutes. So if I just get a three minute timer on the frame, we'll see how that turns out. So it feels like it's barely been a minute and this tub is already filled up. I'm just gonna turn that off now because I don't want to uh, cause a mess, but that is essentially one fifth, or maybe even closer to kind of one eighth of the water that I would use for a normal rinse, just using the Patterson method. That's obviously sort of gratuitously wasteful. And unfortunately now I have to really underline that point by as gently as I can tipping it into one of these sinks. I'm gonna run this test again with the um, the Ilford method, and I'm gonna essentially capture all the water after each inversion. So at the end of the Ilford wash, we can compare this volume to the volume the Ilford wash uses in total. And that might give you a visual representation of quite how much water we're saving. Here's my bucket for the, the Ilford wash. So that's maybe four liters of water let's say kind of plus half a litre for rinsing things off or um, splashing about as you kind of pour your chemistry. The 
thing that kind of shocks me is quite how much the, the previous method used. I thought it was going to be kind of 10 liters versus 3 liters. I didn't realize that essentially for all the hose pipe and for all of the um, plastic film tank and everything, essentially the tap on full speed is always sending the tap on full speed down the drain. Um, it's rather obvious when you think about it. I don't know why that eluded me. But this method essentially sort of hinges on having the same results. Okay, let's get going with the wash. So I've got my tap set at around the same temperature as the developer was. I'm just gonna fill this for the first one. And what I'm gonna do is simply get this going with the water until I see it roughly at the top of the tank. This is a one liter development tank, so I know that it holds a liter of water when I see it kind of there at the top. I'm gonna get the lid, chuck this on. And the first stage of this is just five gentle inversions. Whereas the, the running tap method kind of brute forces and just hopes that if you throw enough water at the film, eventually it will kind of pick up all of the nasty stuff and carry it away. But using this, essentially the agitation is you helping the film get in contact with the fresh water. Have I lost count? I'm gonna say that's four. And that's five. You don't really want to get this stuff in your hands because obviously the first time you do this, there is a fair amount of fixer in it. But I just poured away my first tank. That's the uh, the first liter. Okay. This time I'll count out the ten. All right, let's get this one done. That's my second liter of water used. Give the lid a quick rinse. I'm gonna fill this up for the third. And this one takes the longest by far. step of the process is just a little bit of um, wetting agent but that's the same regardless of whether you use the Ilford method or otherwise I've got my nice bottle of uh, what's this one called it's the Ilford wetting agent let's give that a little splash because this is used in such low dilutions I don't often bother with the, um, the little measuring cylinder I just give it a generous amount, and let's give that a litre of water. Okay, moment of truth. Opening up the tank. Let's see what I've got. It's good with this just to give it a bit of a kind of dunk. I guess I could put the lid on and do some more agitation, but this. Uh, Dunking method does the trick. And actually, that first reel is just a, a spacer because I wasn't using the, um, the second roll. By the way, fun fact about these reels, if you're developing 120 film, which almost everyone is these days, that uh, 220 is quite rare to come across, you can actually put two rolls of 120 onto these. So you do your first as usual, and then you can start another one. They are built to accommodate 220, but obviously the extra length can be used for a second roll instead of one long one. Look at me leaving that tap running. Right, here we go. Let's see if I've got images. They are nicely rinsed. It is Acros, so it dries incredibly clear, but it doesn't look like uh, I've got any rinsing problems. I've saved a huge amount of water. Let's wrap this video up, you know, it's meant to be a short one. I reckon it's probably gonna be like seven, eight minutes. Ilford rinse, use way less water, get the same results. It's a no brainer. Thanks very much for watching. <laughs>